Uh, well, I'm Marije Christova. Uh, I'm a researcher in the field of memory studies for over 10 years already. And um, at this moment I'm working as a postdoc, postdoctoral researcher um, uh, in the UNREST uh, project um, in the team which is researching mass grave exhumations around Europe. I'm really interested in uh, the way uh, mass grave exhumations in contemporary Europe are related to cultural memory, so how they help or how they build up uh, a different relation with the past in the present. I'm specialized in, in Spanish cultural memory, but then within the project, uh, the European project, we, uh, I changed and uh, I started studying Polish um, exhumations, uh, but always within the same uh, interest. So uh, not only what is happening at the site, but how that is related to larger paradigms of memory making. I have been doing field work um, th during the project uh, and I've been studying uh, exhumations that are being carried out nowadays, again by the Institute of National Remembrance. And these exhumations um, are focused on finding the corpses of uh, the cursed soldiers. These were soldiers who have been keeping on fighting as a kind of guerrilla fighters throughout the first 15 years of communism in Poland. So they were fighting for a free Poland, free of Russian domination, let's say. Um, and particularly I've been uh, at a site uh, which is very interesting, it's um, the military uh, cemetery Powolski in Warsaw and uh, this is a cemetery where also the, the, the communist dictators are buried for instance but also a lot of soldiers who had been fighting during the first uh, world war, during the second world war, uh, people who were killed during the Warsaw Uprising so it is a cemetery where a lot of national heroes are to be found and this is also the site where a large mass grave is located and where the people who have been sentenced to death during, the, during early communism have been uh, buried in a, in a large common grave. The contemporary uh, exhumations, with, which I have been uh, studying these two years, they, they are victim-oriented. So here the Polish state is interested in giving a dignified burial to the soldiers who have been fighting against communism for a free Poland. And at, to a certain extent, uh, the discourse that they use is their families have never known where they were buried. Uh, we need to, you know, identify them so finally, you know, they can find the families can be in peace with this part of their history. So that would be very much linked to a human rights uh, paradigm. But on the other hand, uh, these cursed soldiers, they are not referred to as victims, but they are heroes. They are heroes of the modern free Poland and also the modern anti-communist Poland. Um, so the way they are dignified and the way they are repurried and also the way uh, people relate to the exhumation site is not so much that of a mm, place of mourning for families, but rather a place where a lot of volunteers flock in to do their patriotic duty. So we could say that that kind of relation is more related to the paradigm of antagonistic memory, which is focused on heroes, which is focused on um, uh, passions of national belonging, uh, and, and that's what you really see. So what we see in, in contemporary exhumations is the use of cosmopolitan memory discourse, but within actually a larger frame of antagonistic memory making. Yeah, so when I was, uh, when I was doing my research uh, at Powolski Military Cemetery, basically I worked there, um, I did 
ethnographic field work, but my, my work on a daily basis would be uh, that of a volunteer, because there were about 30, 40 people volunteering at the mass grave exhumation. Uh, so what you have is there is a team of professionals, archaeologists, who are exhuming the larger corpus, but then they retrieve a lot of earth uh, from the site, which has to be cleaned by volunteers to find small pieces, uh, small pieces of clothes, sometimes buttons, but also small small pieces of, of human remains. So every day uh, there would be a group of about around 30 volunteers standing at large tables and cleaning the earth. And I would be part of this team of volunteers, which would, would give me a way to, to talk to many different people being at the site, um, but also in a way uh, being part of the team and, and uh, just being there every day to see what kind of things were happening at the mass grave. And I've been doing this for about a month. And, uh, and then you see how uh, this site was actually a site where a lot of things were happening every day. A lot of politicians would come to honor the just retrieved bones, but also uh, religious priests, uh, religious leaders, important uh, priests in Poland would come to the site. Um, sometimes groups with school children, they would come and see what was happening there. Um, school children who would actually be on excursions in the whole Powolski military cemetery as a space of memory and then they would find about find out about the exhumations and, and see what was happening. Um, and the volunteers were also changing. So some people would come for three days, some people would come for the whole period. Uh, some people were interested because they were studying archaeology or history. So they were stu students and they wanted to know what yeah, what, what the work of an, of, of an archaeologist really would look like. Um, but other people were elderly people who already had their pension and they saw this as, as, as a, a beautiful way to contribute to something that they thought was important but was also linked to some of their own struggles in the past as anti-communists, um, um, not fighters but maybe activists, let's say. The volunteers, this is a, I think, especially at the Exhumations and Powolski Cemetery, they became a very important group in um, articulating what was happening at the site, uh, also organizing things outside of Powolski, uh, but also in being the face of modern Poland interested in their heroes. So many of them, uh, most of them were, I think, younger people. Uh, whose relation with these um, victims, who for them are phrased as heroes, uh, so these cursed soldiers, they are, um, they are an example to them and uh, they are very emotionally involved with the whole history of these cursed soldiers. They, um, they are almost, you could almost compare it a little bit to a fan culture, they wear t-shirts with the, the faces of these cursed soldiers on, on the t-shirt or um, they participate in reenactments uh, which have to do with, with the, 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 the struggles and the fights and the life of these cursed soldiers. Um, uh, they go to concerts of uh, rock bands uh, who play songs about these cursed soldiers, so it is a big myth or at least a, a, a big reference framework for young um, patriotic Polish people and and that's also th it's through this kind of emotional link that they relate to these exhumation sites and 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 want to volunteer uh, because of course the history of Poland during the Second World War is extremely com complex. Uh, a lot of Polish citizens have been killed during the Second World War and, and, and this is exactly the focus that the modern narrative which is, which is now promoted with the new um, uh, law and justice government in Poland is focused on uh, Polish victimhood and Polish victimhood is either uh, from from the Germans or uh, during the the communist period and uh, and in that sense 
On the one hand, they use cosmopolitan memory frameworks to talk about victimhood, but on the other hand, we could see that this is a somehow an antagonistic model in which the counterpart is the European Union. So it is a memory which posit is posited against cosmopolitan memory frameworks that come from the European Union. And, and this is interesting when we think about our theories that they can work differently on different levels. So within Poland we could understand what they're doing as cosmopolitan memory because it's victim oriented, it is related to human rights, it's related to Jews, uh, truth and justice, but when we look at an in international framework or the framework of the European Union we could say it's antagonistic because it is posited against somebody else and it's also posited as a framework of, of good and evil and of uh, our national history against your uh, story. So um, yeah I think this is also something interesting that we can learn there.